Okay, let's take a look at Bill Clinton. In the election of 1992, Republicans nominated incumbent president George H.W. Bush. Many thought that he was out of touch with the average Americans who were more concerned about their paychecks than they were with Bush's foreign policy successes. The Democrats nominated Bill Clinton, who was a youthful governor from Arkansas. He was the first member of the baby boomer generation to be nominated for president, and he presented himself as a moderate new Democrat who focused on economic issues like jobs, education, and health care. The independent candidate was Ross Perot, uh, a Texas billionaire who was able to use his own resources to finance a series of TV commercials. He was anti-Washington, anti-deficit. He got nearly 20% of the popular vote. Um, as for Congress, Democrats won control again of both houses of Congress, and clearly Bill Clinton won the election of 92. So Senate Republicans filibustered the president's economic stimulus package and campaign finance reform, environmental bills, and health care reforms. Hillary Rodham Clinton was Bill Clinton's wife, is Bill Clinton's wife. Um, she was assigned to head a task force to propose a plan for universal health care coverage, which was a goal of the Democrats since the Truman presidency. She ran into determined opposition from the insurance industry, small business organizations, and the Republicans. As for discrimination against gays in the military, Clinton failed to end discrimination, but he settled for a plan of don't ask, don't tell. Basically, don't ask if I'm gay, I won't tell you I'm gay. A kind of secrecy of sorts. The Family Medical Leave Act was signed under Clinton. The Motor Voter Law, which enabled citizens to register to vote as they received their driver's licenses. The Brady Handgun Bill mandated a five-day waiting period for the purchase of handguns. The anti-crime bill provided $30 billion in funding for more police protection and crime prevention programs, and also banned the sale of most assault rifles, which made the NRA pretty ticked off. Uh, a deficit reduction budget included $225 billion in spending cuts and a $241 billion in tax increases, which increased appropriations for education and job training. He also, his big thing was NAFTA, or the North American Free Trade Agreement, which was a free trade zone with Canada and Mexico. Basically, no tariffs on trading between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. Republicans took over Congress in 94 for the first time since 1954. You have zealous reformers like Newt Gingrich, who became Speaker of the House and led Republicans in an attack on federal programs and spending outlined in their campaign manifesto, their contract with America. There were two shutdowns of the federal government in late 1995, which many Americans blamed on the Republicans in Congress. They presented a balanced budget in 96, where Congress and the president compromised on a budget that left Medicare and Social Security benefits intact, limited welfare benefits to five years as a max, and they set some curbs on immigrants, and they increased the minimum wage, and they balanced the budget. They also eliminated the deficit in federal spending in 1998, leading to the first surplus since 1969. On April 19, 1995, a domestic terrorist truck bombing on a federal building occurred in downtown Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. It killed at least 168 people and injured more than 680 others. It was the worst act of domestic terrorism until 9-11. As for the election of 1996, Republicans nominated Senator Bob Dole of Kansas on the right. Uh, he was the majority leader of the Senate, and he proposed a 15% tax cut. Voter turnout fell below 50% of eligible voters because it was campaigns of character attacks, massive campaign spending. Um, Clinton became the first Democrat since FDR to be re-elected president, and Republicans celebrated retaining control of both houses of Congress, which they had not done since the 1920s. During this time, we also see a huge tech boom. It was the longest peacetime economic expansion in history with annual growth rates of more than 4%. Personal computers, software, internet, cable, and wireless communications fueled increased national productivity and made e-commerce part of the American lifestyle. 
Apple, Intel, Microsoft, Amazon, AOL, Yahoo, Google, all of these were created in the late 90s. Well, you've got Apple and Microsoft before the late 90s, but our big internet companies that we think of today, like Google, Yahoo, Amazon, were all part of this tech boom. So from 97 to 2000, you have the Whitewater investigation. In 1978, Bill and Hillary formed the Whitewater Development Corporation, which intended to buy up 230 acres of riverfront land and then sell it as lots for vacation homes. Their business partner, Jim McDougall, cut the Clintons a deal where they wouldn't pay any upfront investment, but that they could profit from home sales. The project was a huge failure. The land was inaccessible after frequent heavy storms. So McDougall bought a small savings and loan association and defrauded it and the small business investment firm, which led to a bank failure costing the federal government around $73 million. Whoops. Critics claim that Bill and Hillary were in on the conspiracy, but they were never charged with any illegalities because it could never be proved. Travelgate happened in May 1993 when seven employees of the White House Travel Office were fired. The White House claimed it was because of financial improprieties in the Travel Office operation during the previous administrations. Critics contended that the firings were done to allow friends of the president and his wife to take over the travel business. The conspiracy theories were completely unfounded. Filegate. Everything after Watergate gets a gate name with it. In June 1996, there was improper access in the 1993 and 1994 to FBI security clearance documents. Craig Livingstone, the director of the White House's Office of Personnel Security, improperly requested and received from the FBI background checks concerning several hundred individuals without asking for permission. Many of those files covered White House employees from a previous Republican administration. They were investigated by the House Government Reform and Oversight Committee, the Senate Judiciary Committee, and the Whitewater Independent Council. There was no credible evidence of any criminal activity by any individual in the matter. Hillary was also accused at this time of authorizing this improper use, but there was no credible evidence of it. Kenneth Starr, an independent prosecutor, charged that Clinton during his deposition in a civil suit about alleged sexual harassment while governor of Arkansas, had lied about his relations with a young woman who was a White House intern. This led to his impeachment. Uh, in December of 1998, the House voted to impeach him on two counts for perjury, aka lying under oath, and obstruction of justice. The public condemned Clinton's reckless personal behavior, but popular opinion did not support impeachment about his personal life. So in February of 1999, the Senate formal trial led to neither impeachment charge being upheld. Basically, he didn't get removed from office, but he was impeached. Uh, so essentially, he was charged with the crime. Uh, Republicans damaged his reputation by making him the first president since 1868 to be impeached. As for his foreign policy, in 1997, Madeleine K. Albright became the first woman to serve as Secretary of State. In 1993, uh, Somalia, we had the first deaths of U.S. soldiers during humanitarian missions. In 1994, we sent 20,000 troops into Haiti to restore its elected president, Jean-Bertrand Aristide, after a military coup and deteriorating economic conditions, which caused an exodus of Haitians to Florida. In 1998, uh, we played a key diplomatic role in negotiating an end to British rule and the armed conflict in Northern Ireland. As for Europe during this time, the European Union was created uh, as a unified market of 15 nations, 12 of which adopted a single currency, the euro, in 2002. It grew to include 27 European nations by 2007, including 10 former satellite nations of the Soviet Union. Russia struggled to reform its economy and to fight rampant corruption. In 2000, Vladimir Putin took office, and they had strained relations with the U.S. because of brutal repression of the civil war in Chechnya. Um, Russia supported the Serbian dictator Slobodan Milosevic 
who carried out armed conflicts to suppress independence movements, including killing hundreds of thousands of ethnic and religious minorities. In Asia, North Korea stepped up its nuclear reactor and missile programs. In 98, India and Pakistan tested nuclear weapons for the first time. In 95, we established diplomatic relations with Vietnam for the first time since the Vietnam War. And in China, we had continued trade agreements, even though the human rights activists and labor unions protested against us having trade agreements. In the Middle East, in 1998, Saddam Hussein defied UN weapons inspectors, um, which led to the suspension of all inspections. Clinton responded with a series of airstrikes, but Hussein remained in power. Israel granted home rule to the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip and parts of the Western Bank territories and signed a peace treaty with Jordan in 1994. This deteriorated after the assassination of Israeli Prime Minister in 1995, and then it broke down in 2000 over issues of Israeli security and control of Jerusalem. As for globalization, there are surging increases in trade, communications, and the movement of money around the world and people. Uh, the pro he promoted the development of global and regional economic organizations like the World Trade Organization, the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, and the Group of Eight, or G8, um, all of these global and regional economic organizations look to oversee trade agreements and stuff like that. Um, there was a growing gap between the rich and the poor of the world, which caused tensions as well. As for society, there were 281.4 million people in the U.S. in 2000. We were the third most populous nation in the world. 50% of residents lived in suburbs, 30% lived in central cities, and 20% lived in rural regions. The fastest growing areas of the country were the West and the South. The Immigration Reform and Control Act of 1986 attempted to create a fair entry process for immigrants, but failed to stop the problem of illegal entry into the U.S. from Mexico. The country was criticized for granting amnesty to some undocumented immigrants from Mexico and the Americas. In 2000, 35 million people were over the age of 65, but the fastest growing segment of the population was those who were 85 and older. There were concerns about health care, prescription drugs, senior housing, and social security increasing. There was a decline of the quote-unquote traditional family and the growing number of single parent families. Uh, high school graduates earned only half of the income of college graduates, and the largest gap between the lowest and highest paid workers and the greatest concentration of wealth among the top earning households at this time. In 2030, it is estimated that there will be only about two workers for every person receiving Social Security.